Prologue, 1992, British Columbia, Canada. She waited until the scientist's family visited to escape. The man was always a little absent-minded when they came, taking longer with feeding and forgetting simple routines, such as properly latching cages. He was extra inattentive today, his thoughts so overrun with making up for something called Valentine's Day to his sweet wife. The jittery little man remained unaware she could hear his thoughts, each morning feeding her grasshoppers while she perused his mind with leisure. She took pains to hide her talent, keenly aware of how often the word dissect flared up whenever any of her brothers or sisters exhibited signs of higher intelligence. Ah, you're here, he called as a red-faced woman strode between the two soldiers guarding the entrance. The visitor card dangling from her neck was partially covered by a child's body. Another child trailing behind her had ruddy blonde hair and piercing eyes. So glad you could come. It took me forever to convince them it was safe for you to visit again. The woman sniffled. They raised such a fuss last time. The man reached out and took the smaller child from the woman, rocking him in his arms. Well, what do you think? The woman shuddered. You know I don't like it. Far too many of the little beasties here. The man laughed playfully dipping the child in his arms. Beasties? You're looking at the future of cognitive science. The other child walked slowly through the room, pressing his face against each of the glass cages to examine the creatures within. I'd like to pull that one's legs off, he thought, a smile tugging his lips. See, said the man, our son likes them. The boy nodded, eyes remaining fixated on the cage's inhabitants. The woman pursed her lips. He takes after his father too much. The man walked over to his son, placing a hand on his shoulder. Do you want to be like daddy when you grow up? Of course, papa, chimed the child. I want to cut up insects for fun, too. There's a good lad, said the man love for his family washing away what little remaining thoughts he had of his daily duties. She used this moment to escape, silently crawling to the roof of her cage and squeezing through the tiny slit left open by the scientist's negligence. She'd planned on scampering to the air duct hanging a few meters away, but the cool voice of the child's mind held her in place. I wish I could weave webs. She wavered in place, a new potential course of action springing into her mind. Her eight eyes flickered between the air vent and pale-skinned boy. I'd wrap up everyone I didn't like, starting with my brother. The tubby woman joined her sons and husband in front of the glass cage. Just remember to look after mommy when you're rich and famous. The scientist smoothed the collar of his white lab coat before plucking a kiss on his wife's cheeks. He won't have to. I will. Mommy is an idiot. I dangle her over a fire. Oh, stop, giggled the woman, her thick cheeks blooming red. Why don't we go to the cafeteria for lunch and then you can tell us all about your research? Fantastic plan. What do you say, son? I'd make Daddy watch as Mommy burned. That sounds great, Daddy. The family turned towards the door, leaving her with an agonizing choice between freedom or potentially pursuing something more. She stretched out her mind, again digging deeper into the small child's consciousness as he made his way to the door. After Mommy, I'd burn my brother. Only slower. She blinked twice before scurrying across the floor, leaping for the woman's swinging purse as they reached the doorway. The leather was slippery under her feet, but she managed to crawl inside an open pocket before they'd passed the room's guard. 
For the first time in her life, she found herself outside the four walls of the lab. Nestled between tampons and lipstick, she curled into a ball, content to listen to the family as they paraded towards the cafeteria. Honey, said the woman, I wish we did this more often. Me too, dear, me too. I wish you were all dead. <laughs>